Hello guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam, this is Salt and Plays, and this week I use a really clickbaity title to try and teach you how to paint some interesting looking cloaks. We'll see how well I do. Let's go. So when it comes to highlighting cloaks, I like to use a pretty simple method. It's slightly time consuming sometimes, but I think you'll agree the effect is usually pretty worth it. So all I've done here is base coated with corn red and I've only done one layer. And what that means is that some of the black primer is still showing through, which means that when I come to do my highlights, which you'll be seeing me doing now, they have a bit more texture and depth and definition. All this process is for a clean weathered cloak is cross hatching and lots of it. I'm using very thin corn red. Now, as I mentioned, I didn't give a fully opaque layer on the corn red when I used the normal base coating technique. So this is adding that secondary layer whilst also building in that texture. You know, you can think of this as us just setting up our canvas for our future highlight colors. Now, don't worry if it doesn't look like much at this stage. The effect is very subtle. Only when we start adding our extra layers of paint in brighter colours will it start to look like how it's meant to. Now as I mentioned I'm doing a cross hatching technique. This is usually for quite heavy fabrics. If you want to do a lighter fabric you want to keep this fairly minimal and with very thin strokes. I'm allowing my brush strokes to be a little bit thicker because these capes look massive especially when you remember that they're eight feet tall. Now we can use this stage of the painting to just practice our brush strokes because when we come back with our highlights later, we want to be a bit more exact. But because the color change is so subtle here, we're literally just adding the same color on top. It's not really a problem if we make a mistake. Practice does make perfect. Or you know, my bootleg version of perfect. Once I'd covered all the raised detail with the corn red, I switched out to Evil Sun Scarlet, my first highlight colour. I'm making sure I'm very careful with this with thin brush strokes, so it doesn't look like I'm just base coating again. And I'm also being sure to cover basically everywhere I went with the corn red. It's important to note I'm not putting these stripes exactly inside the stripes of corn red because that's just not realistic and I don't want to be here for several weeks. But I am covering the same general areas that the corn red did because that's marked out where my highlights are gonna go. First layer of highlights done, and here's how it looks. It's now we can really start to see the effect come together, and I love it. We interrupt this regularly scheduled broadcast to show that the groomer completely ruined my dog and now he's shaved and has no tail. Um, how do you feel about it? I mean, I know you can't tell, but he's not, he's not happy. Are we, Bram? Oh, yeah, boy, go on, dog. Okay. Um, are we talking about are we talking about cloaks? Yeah, let's continue talking about cloaks. Bye. Yeah, we were talking about cloaks. Now we're on to the second part of my highlighting process, which is going over the specifically raised detail, so corners, edges, etc. And this time I'm using Wild Rider Red, which is the Citadel next step up from Evil Sun Scarlet. By this point we've got some quite nicely defined cloaks, so all we're doing here is adding that edge highlighting. Make sure it's patchy, don't draw straight lines, you want to do little dabs, little cross hatches on these inner folds of the cloak, and around the edges I'm doing a slight bit of stippling. Now just to clarify, that's not stippling by stabbing my brush onto the side of the cloaks. I'm using the side of my brush and gently dabbing my way down. So it's not the straight edge highlighting of Heavy Metal Team, but it's still a type of edge highlighting and it just gives that nice scratchy appearance. Now whilst it is mildly time consuming, I find this type of highlighting and making cloaks really zen because I can see it come together before my eyes so I feel like I'm achieving something and at the same time it's actually quite easy. 
just doing repetitive brush strokes over and over again. It's a bit like meditation, I really highly recommend it. I mean, duh, I'm making a video about it. Worth noting that I was batch painting during this whole process, so it made it even longer. So uh, let's just speed up through that bit. I'm highlighting all the reds alongside because I don't like doing things in isolation. I like to just smash things out. I never specifically go out to decide to make a specific kind of video. I'm just hobbying along and go, hmm, people might want to see this. And we'll soon see if you did actually want to see it. I hope you did. Maybe. Now one final stage before we're done with these cloaks, and that's to add a nice glaze of red. The cloaks are looking a little bit orange now, because as you go through red highlights, they do often become more orange or pink, depending on where you're going. So I've got some Flesh Terrors red that I'm spattering everywhere like a madman, mixed with an acrylic medium. And all I'm going to do is glaze this gently over the top. I'm probably using about five or six drops medium to one drop of Flesh Terrors Red, but as you could see, I kind of just slapped it onto the palette. Once dry, this can leave a bit of a glossy finish, so once you finish painting the rest of your model, do make sure you matte varnish, and then you won't have a shiny cloak, you'll have a nice normal looking cloak, except with some absolutely badass texture. Yeah, hopefully, if you follow my instructions. Also make sure to clean up any spatter that you really badly got over the backpack of your Space Marine because you weren't paying attention and you were looking at your phone whilst doing this. I'm so pleased I don't call myself a professional because I just would be lying outright to you. Anyway, let's speed through this next bit and see the final result. There we go, and that's how to get your cloaks looking textured as if they're a heavy piece of material. Thank you so much for everyone for watching. I hope this helps you, even if it's just a little bit of inspiration to do things your own way. I love painting my Templars like this. I think it's uh, really fun, and it makes me feel like I've actually achieved something, and I'm painting to a higher standard than I actually can. Thank you to all my wonderful YouTube members. You guys are legends. See you soon.